Welcome back to Mortal Kombat Deception. So let's explore the world and see what we can find. Yeah. We're talking about who we want to see as guests in Mortal Kombat games, and I want Venom. <laughs> he would Aside work. From, Aside yeah, from, I mean, well, Carnage would be per. Okay, you have to remember about the edge of that. The way the Venom symbiote works, uh, as long as it possesses someone, it can allow to be like regenerate stuff like cuts. Uh, so most of the more most fatalities that involves cutting the limbs out of someone might be a bit iffy to work. It's a video game. So here's well, the idea: with uh, you have a map screen that tells you where you are, and you also have uh, a green dot that tells you where you're supposed to go. So basically, if you can't see the beacon. Uh, just use the map screen. You also have that compass there. There you go. So we have to go there. Fortunately, can you technically for kill. Wait, hold on. Can you technically kill Scorpion even though he's meant to be immortal and not? You dead? you you can kill him, but he just materializes again in another realm. So. You know, there's still to this day people who are vying for Shaggy Norval Rod. Like uh, you can see it in the animated film Scorpions. You can see it in the animated film. Oh, hold on. <laughs> oh, look at Luke Kuzir, the master of the Lin Kuei. Yes, the master of the Lin Kuei from, from Sub-Zero Mythologies. <laughs> yep. Consistency with the, with the costume design, never thought I would see that. Yeah, with, you know, that game of all things. So there you go, we found the Lin Kuei, and if you remember correctly, after, um, after 4, Sub-Zero reformed the Lin Kuei to be a force for good, so now Lin Kuei is gonna, sorry, so now Sub-Zero is gonna teach us the ways of the Lin Kuei fighting style. Wait, 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 hold on, but this is a tutorial, doesn't the tutorial take place before that? The tutorial? I don't get your point. <laughs> Remember, Pedro, this is the tutorial mode of this game. Like, doesn't this take place in the past before and eventually lead up like to the, the ancient event? ancient past. Uh... Well, yeah, but this is five years later. Remember, like, it's been five years, so now we're already at the point where Sub-Zero is the head also, of the Link Way. Also, I have to say, Sub-Zero's design for this game is also, really great. Also, also, I love Sub -Zero, one of Sub-Zero's moves in this game, where he literally kicks you in the fucking balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I asked because, well, this guy mentions that Sub-Zero will be his teacher, but shouldn't Sub-Zero be the one in charge of things if this is, you know... Uh, yeah, if I recall correctly, it is before the events of mythologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. particular portion of the plot, mind you. That's why I said that, because, you know, this is the... Well, I mean, this still has to be in the past of the series before we... Uh, maybe this Sub-Zero... Maybe this Sub-Zero is b -Han, I don't know. Mm, well, um, I'm more inclined to believe that this is like the classic Sub-Zero, we're just, you know, well, that's, again, that's what I'm talking about, Bihan. Right, yeah, it's like a, yeah, we're probably gonna have more time skips later. That said, did they ever establish how much in the past that this no. thing starts from the current stuff? No, uh, they keep it, they keep it vague, uh... I'm gonna check if the wiki's a bit more specific about it, how it, so. Mm-hmm. Again, I, I just can't get over the, that attack, it just looks so goofy. <laughs> I know, uh, and, right? Uh, uh, yeah, and, and people, and people say in Mortal Kombat Annihilation, Gopi and yelling suckers at people was a bit off. It is. Was it? Excellent. You have mastered the Lin Kuei basic combos. Let us see how you fare. Oh, yeah, Jeff, that bit where he that's Katana and he yells, SUCKERS! Oh, I know. oh, I know that he does that, but like, honestly, of all the problems in that movie, I didn't really see that as a problem, offensive really. thing about that movie, but it's still like he wouldn't say that. I could see him saying it under a certain predicament, especially when you know, especially in the era where he was mainly known for saying like very small sentences or words. So he, no, yeah, but here's the thing: he's Scorpion's more direct and very serious. So him like hey, suckers. It's like no. Well, Okay, okay, okay. To be fair, around the time of Mortal Kombat Annihilation, I don't think his whole sh his incredibly serious shtick was completely set in stone, so... Not I quite. I kind of get him yelling suckers. Not quite, uh, I guess. Uh, you cannot make that argument. But at the same time, uh, even, but at the same time, a lot of you, it wasn't necessarily something that people expected. Here's my main issue. That was pretty much all we got of him in that goddamn movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
arguably Don't worry, he, he returns than... to the cartoon. Oh, the cartoon is tied into the live action movies. Yeah. It's an ultimate ah, That's why Johnny Cage one. isn't in there. Imagine, sorry. Yeah, oh, that, oh. that's why Johnny Cage isn't there, because he's technically dead. Defenders of the Realm, not yeah. really. I don't know. I was, I was told it's it's cause it meant to be it's connected. An, it's it's an alternate sequel to the first uh, movie, but that's it. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's as much of a sequel. Especially to because the that uh, it's, it's as much as a sequel to the first Street Fighter movie. It's also because it starts with a lot of characters knowing each other, including characters who did not appear in the movie at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about characters who showed up and say Mortal Kombat Annihilation, if that were counted? Like, that's what he said, for example, the gang knows, uh, in the cartoon knows from the get-go who Nightwall is, apparently they've been friends for a long time, but uh, in Annihilation, Nightwall shows up once, uh, you know, to show support uh, for Liu Kang, and Liu Kang doesn't even know who he is until he shows up. So today, were you able to find anything on the wiki? Okay, supposedly it's... Um, Supposedly it's before the events of the intro of the game, but it doesn't specify a specific origi origin point. It seems to be vaguely, you know, in in the time between, well, well also simultaneously while some of the games are happening, apparently. So there you go, That's then. weird. So but again, I guess we don't know specifics, so this still could be before the events of mythologies. It could be, yeah. <sighs> Okay, 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 you know what, okay. I get that this is a tutorial mode, so maybe not all their high perspectives were put towards the tutorial. That's not necessarily an excuse, but I do get if their main focus was on the story mode. Like, again, technically this tutorial mode is an extra tacked on thing. Granted, is this like the only way you can properly get a tutorial, aside from obviously looking up online how to play as these characters? Basically, yeah. Um... The, this game pretty much this game pretty much works as the game's tutorial as well. Which you know is not inherently a bad thing. If you're a first time player, that is. If you're a second time player and just want to or heck, you know, if you're not even in it for the story but just want to learn the characters or whatnot, you know, or at least get a good start on them, and this is the only means to do so, let's assume this is played back when this game first came out. Yeah, I can see how that would rub some people the wrong way. Also, also, I know that the the franchise in general was being to be a bit cheeky in referencing, uh, you know, uh, martial arts uh, and products uh, from Japan, China, and the rest of Asia. But uh, you know what's the trivia kicker, Jovan? That I wow. forgot until I found out again here. Um, <laughs> Shujinko is the Japanese name for protagonist. So our protagonist is ah! usually called the protagonist. We're having an M Night Shyamalan case like in Dating the Water. Well, take, well, take, oh. so it's like in Tenet as well, because uh, the, the 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 main character of Tenet is also called protagonist. Um, <laughs> How what? Cute. No, it's because it's yeah. it's because that Tenet is basically a very. Uh, uh, let me put it this way: Tenet is basically a, a movie that's all about the anal uh, story structure, in a lot of ways. Let's just put it that way. I got, I got it. I got it. What? That's his. That's actually his uh, name, Pro T Agonist. <laughs> sure. Yeah, but, see, 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 here's the. I want me to elaborate though. What I mean is that the character himself is never named in the movie. Uh, it's just that in the credits, he's just credited as protagonist. But like in the movie itself, nobody actually calls him protagonist. They just never. It, it's literally a Final Fantasy X thing where then nobody ever mentions the character's name, basically. Remember, guys, this is an industry. But this is an industry that came up with a main character's name being Cypher Rage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's something about a name like Cypher Rage which is equally awesome and dumb and comedic all at the same time that you can't help but enjoy it. Did Will Smith come up with that name? <laughs> I won. No, okay, I'm actually more betting Shyamalan came up with. No, 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 I actually. Actually, too, no, uh, uh, unfor you can blame that on Will Smith, actually. It's wait, 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 we know. Wait, wait, wait. Well, Shyamalan didn't have much control over that movie. No, he did not. There, is that, well, okay, 
I will say this though, the After Earth movie is a fun game of trying to guess which was caused by Will Smith and his son's egos, and which was caused by M. Night Shyamalan and his ego and uh, some... What about Gary Witzer? That's a fan joke. Oh yeah, that too. Wait, it's the the movie better than Hancock. Remember, Joe, the plan... No, 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 no. (laughs) Hancock's actually a good movie. After Earth, it's not. Uh, The thing, that's the thing. uh... We'll have to watch it together. Job, anyway, that, you were saying, Pedro? The job, that's the thing, Jova. Like, the reason Will Smith... Uh, the whole reason that movie exists is for Will Smith to try to force his son onto us. And the, thi- and the thing... And w- and it's pretty much uh, obvious at the time that... Uh, the reason Shyamalan was the d- hired as the director is because nobody else was interested in directing that. Because they knew it was a, a stupid vanity project that was going to fail. Um, that's the thing, though. Wow, okay. Well, we can talk a lot of it onto Will Smith. After Earth still has a lot of M. Night Shyamalan-isms in it. Oh, it does. Oh, 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 it does. But uh, uh, but Will Smith was the one creatively in control. So he's the one who even allowed M. Night Shyamalan to do his Shyamalan-isms. So, like uh, I said, it's a combination of a lot of stuff here. That I'm not going to say that I exempt Will Smith from the blame because, no, no. He probably has the lion's share of the blame in that. He does. But, uh, but but there is, there are reasons people still remember it more as an M. Night Shyamalan movie because it has pretty much a lot of the M. Well, Night Shyamalan characteristics which M. Night Shyamalan they, himself even, provide. Even though the marketing try to hide as best as possible. Pretty much. Right? Yeah. Well, that, well, that's because, well, Dwibs, what was M. Night Shyamalan's last film at this time? Oh, that right, was- yeah. Well, the well, last did, one that the, he had directed, like, let, you know. Let's check. To Wikipedia! Well, it was, it was Last Airbender, but anyway... It was Last Airbender. The point, the point, but that's the thing, the, yeah, the point is, it just, um... Uh... Uh, with After Earth, it was just one of those cases where uh, Will Smith, like uh, Will Smith, should just n- stick to what he knows, which is rapping and acting, <laughs> because... Uh, his major, his first big attempt at making a movie of his own, um, as a producer and story writer, yeah. <laughs> um, Here we are, Reb. In terms of wide-scale release, uh, Last Airbender came out in July 2010, Devil came out in September of 2010. Yeah, but here's yes, the by thing, that point, Devil M. Night was, his first was not, was not the director of Devil. No. He was, yeah. the, it was Devil was his story, and he produced it, but he didn't wasn't a writer. Last That's Airbender, a... he was director, writer, and producer. Yeah, After that Earth, was pretty he was director, m- writer, and producer. That was pretty much my point. And, 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 okay, 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 even if we do take Devil as like his last film, that was still badly received. That said, though, the last film he had directed with was Last Airbender. So you can imagine he was box office poison at the time. Yeah, th- th- that's why. Uh, yeah, Devil also was supposed to be the first of a series, but we never got any more from that series yeah, because well, well, because well, 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 well the first I, one was I, Devil. So I forgot yeah. if I ever talked. About no, it didn't win on the box office. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold for, on, hold on, hold on, guys. Let TOS. I forgot if question. I ever asked uh, these of when we did the movie, probably. But do we ever got a on comp- reason why? The, the rest of the supposed trilogy was never made because, because the first was w- bad. because the first one was devil too <laughs> like yeah, as a stop Hollywood for making sequels to movies that aren't performed or will okay, go uh, negatively okay okay, okay team, team, let me specify for God De- which, which company was behind that actually Deji Shark Universal Pictures actually Deji Shark was actually successful for its budget. Anyway, and yeah. people actually liked it. To, you know, so like, like, yeah, okay, but here's okay, the thing: De- Devil's bo- Devil's budget was ten million. Its box office was sixty-two point six million. So, I guess also. Uh, anyway, hold on. I'll mention this later. May greatly benefit our clan. We must secure it before our rivals do. Your password is Ice Dragon. Really? Yes. Like you no one will make ever it more think of that. <laughs> it's Dude. literally the logo of your fucking clan. <laughs> But so yeah, there you know. would think of us using an ice dragon as our pass. So yeah, Shushinko has now officially passed all the initiation, so now Shushinko is a Linkwe. Yay! What will this do for the plot, I wonder? Nothing! Um, 
it's it, it's all just an excuse to win the Linquay's trust so we can steal something from them. I'm not kidding. This is basically the story. Shujinko gains someone's confidence and then he steals the con the, uh, the 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 MacGuffins from them. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 Joe, Joe, Joe. The elder gods told them to do it, so it's okay. <laughs> anyway, here's I, I get the, the feeling. Of... I get the feeling that Boom is trying to go for a Shadow of the Colossus thing. Sorry, yeah, you don't really have the chops to pull that off. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, just no. But anyway, Dad's to you. Here's probably the real reason that those devil sequels will never be made. First off, it started that they were just taking forever to make, and that's not even getting into how the studios were unsure of it. Also, there was the thing that when you do take into consideration how much money was spent on the advertising for Devil, it was yeah, it's still technically a success, but not as big a oh. success as the studio had been hoping for. The biggest reason Trump. we're probably not going to get those sequels, though, split happened. Like, ever since Split, pretty much almost all if... Well, yeah, pretty much all of M. Night Shyamalan's projects have been either know. disregarded or canned. This item. Take it to the Lin Kuei Temple. We will distract the Red Dragon to aid you. Okay. Uh, yeah, the Red Dragon guys, they were, they were a thing, and we so, care so about So, yeah. Dragon. So yeah, the idea now is that we're supposed to get that uh, artifact that's that's some, uh, that's in the cave, uh, and take it back to the Lin Kuei temples for safekeeping. So let's see what the artifact is. Okay, one thing, I another thing I will. Hold, add hold on, this. The Earth Realm Kamidogu. Well, how convenient. We found the first Kamidogu, mm -hmm. and now the uh, and the Q Damashi in. There you go. Join the Lin Kuei. I have learned Sub Zero's. That object you carry. Yes, it is as I suspected. Through the ignorance of the Lin Kuei. <laughs> <laughs> I have? You, must find you didn't need to point out your character's stupidity, but okay, <laughs> sorry, you do you. <laughs> the well, to be fair, he was pointing out the Lin Kuei's ignorance, not Shujinko's uh, ignorance. Although, yeah, Shujinko is stupid too. <laughs> Oh, I mean, well, I mean, the Lin Kuei are characters in the story, so yeah, like I said, point out your character's stupidity. That's that's fine. I, anyway, I can't, I was even... So, are you implying that the Lin Kuei didn't know that they had that artifact lying around, or that they did know in their security? Apparently, Java. That crap. The story kind of implies that only uh, Damashi knows about the Kamidogu. The, the actual people in the realms don't know what those objects are. Go ahead, whoops. Um, I haven't seen Devil, but if it's anything like the the next movie that director made, I think I'll pass. Devil is actually pretty wait, funny. Wait, hold on. I can tell you that. Wait, wait, hold on. Weren't you in our Devil commentary? Or was that me, Pedro, and Tia? No, no. I haven't seen Devil. I was in the I was in the commentary of the next movie he did, as above, so below. <laughs> Oh, 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 okay. The, let me just say this, Dwibs, though. Devil feels purely like an M. Night Shyamalan thing. He may not have directed it, but I would not be surprised if he ghost directed it. Like, so, not, only so is I... the, <laughs> not only is the writing on point, but the directing style screams a Shyamalan. So basically, Joe, right. you're okay. telling me that M. Night Shyamalan went over, went to John Eric Dowdle and tell him, copy my homework. Yes, why not? Anyway, we now went through the Earth Realm portal into this place. That's where it is. I don't get it. Why is it that he, just his voice is this badly edited or sounded in? Like I'm guessing his voice sounds fine. I'm guessing the idea is that they wanted they want the to sound like an ethereal being, and that's why they put that filter in. Um, I'm guessing that's their logic. I can barely hear him though. Like he doesn't sound majestic. He sounds like he's in a tunnel on the phone. <laughs> I'm so I'm sorry, Shushinku, but this, uh, the 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 the, uh, the the my internet signal is very weak, so I must talk to you only via this method. 
Um, You're an elder god. Shouldn't you have like <laughs> access to the ultimate connection? Unfortunately, the elder gods are assholes, so they didn't uh, give me that. Damn. But uh, yeah, okay. Basically, Tio, let me just talk. Tio's gone. About this. Tio's burped. The reason. Oh, well, dead. Are you there? Let me just talk it up to Go you on. the reason we're probably not going to get the devil sequels. It's the Batman and Robin situation. The movie was technically and then a wrong. box office success, but the, re but the reputation of it is so bad that, from what I can garner, the company probably went, Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it's called Never Realm, you dog. Yeah, basically. This place, <laughs> it feels <laughs> dark. <laughs> Oh, Shinjoku. <laughs> Do people even really remember this protagonist? Not really. The Mortal Kombat Armageddon was really popular back in the day. It is regarded as the best of the PS2 trilogy. Um, but uh, but it's but it's mostly because of how ambitious. Like people, when it comes to the story mode, over people appreciate more the the overall ambition and the cool ideas rather than the, instead of uh, rather more than the execution basically um, i can definitely believe that again like i said for the time this was a, a really cool novelty that uh, was a cool idea and like i said the armageddon conquest mode will actually fix a lot of problems it was still it's still gonna have bad voice acting but honestly at this point bad voice hilariously bad voice acting is kind of part of its charm so cool <laughs> Until we get to the modern era. Also, Shang Tsung, what are you randomly doing here in the Nether Realm? <laughs> it's to remind you that you're in the Mortal Kombat universe. Oh, I guess. Tell me, if you talk to him, he talks about putting together the tournament because. Well, anything to give us a semblance of when this takes place. That's the thing, Jova. Later on, we're going to get a, pro a more proper thing where. It seems like they're trying to do a. Oh, it's this is not taking place at, during Mortal Kombat 1. Which is weird because okay, so okay, I'm guessing I'm supposed to I, I'm guessing I'm supposed to assume that before Mortal Kombat One, Bihan was the the leader of the Lin Kuei, even though mythology is clearly contradicts that. But whatever. But you do not look like a demon of the Nether Realm. I am Ashra. I was once like the others before I found the means to purge myself of the evil taint that permeates all who reside here. By slaying demons with an enchanted sword, I will gradually transform into a being whom this realm cannot contain. Eventually, I will... I mean, the art is proof of that, enough. <laughs> you do not seem to belong here yourself. I am from Earth Realm. I see. Be warned, Shuchinko. The Nether Realm is quite... Yeah, seriously, I mean, the... Again, this, 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 this is exactly like Mortal Kombat 4, where it sounds like they just um, got the developers yeah, and the, the voices. It's the developers, it's yeah. It's even worse. Yeah, the developers did the voices. I accept your most gracious offer. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a new character for the franchise. Yes, Ashra, Ashra is one of the new characters introduced in this game, yes. Um, Alright, so now it's time to learn all of her moves. All right, uh, carry on. Son, but uh, yeah, okay. Astra is kind of an interesting idea, character-wise in the series. Uh, again, she's I a Nether Realm being who wants to leave the Nether Realm uh, to pursue her dreams or some shit. But the, the, it doesn't matter. Kind of similar to Scorpion, but not entirely. She's. I guess. The She's that memorable to the point where she only shows up in this game, in Armageddon, and of course she has to because Armageddon was the whole point of Armageddon was to have everybody anyway, and she's never showed up in the new timeline. I really do get what you mean about this game being remembered more for the transitional phase than the actual execution itself. I don't know, here's, the, well, 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 here's the thing, Jova. Even though the execution of the conquest mode is uh, hit and miss, Everything in this game outside of the conquest mode is actually pretty great for its time. Like the fighting has been refined, the the alternate modes like puzzle combat and and motor combat, get it? <laughs> um, are really cool uh, additions. We also we, we also we also have Mortal Kombat chess. Um, 
Mm. Like, uh, th th this game, this game for the time that was actually... Real eyes. Hold oh. on. Hold on, that's what Pedro finish. This game for the time, it was a great fighting game. Yeah, obviously, if you play it today, it's going to be rough because, you know, fighting games have come along since then. But for the time, it was okay. a really... Uh, but for the time, it was pretty great. Yeah, the Conquest mode is iffy, but it's only one of many modes of gameplay you can play in this game. Yes, that's right. So if you don't like Conquest mode, you can just ignore it and play the rest, really. I mean, the the only major sure. thing the only major thing you gain for the other modes from playing this mode is if you finish the the, the conquest mode, you unlock Shujinku in the arcade mode. However, if you don't care about Shujinku to begin with, well, all the more reason not to play this then. Carry on. <laughs> ah, wow. So the so basically, they were really banking on people liking Shin Shujinku. Not really. Like honestly, even if you ignore conquest mode, the game works just fine without him. To be honest no, with no, you. No, 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 no. My point is like, well, it sounds like they were relying on people liking him if, you know, that was how he was supposed to be unlocked. That or people just really wanted to complete the game as a whole anyway. Sure. Again, the idea is that, uh, like, they, they still, the, most of the focus from the developers was still the arcade mode because, well, you know, it's Mortal Kombat after all. Um,. Uh, like, uh, the Conquest mode technically is a bonus. Technically. Even though it's a very elaborate bonus, it's still technically a bonus. Oh yeah, definitely. But yeah, I guess, yeah, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, we should remember where the focus is. Like, technically for our commentaries, we do focus more on the story mode stuff because that's arguably the most convenient way to show off, you know, the main gameplay without stuff getting repetitive, essentially. But we should also take into consideration the game itself here and there. Although, I think that does again speak volumes on how even when you consider how good this game was, Shinjoku, sorry, Shinjinku, he's so unmemorable I'm getting his name wrong. Shinjinku is the Moko Jin of Mortal Kombat. Like that's the thing, despite how good this game is, the character himself just was not doing it for anyone, really. Mm -hmm, but anyone who's played Tekken, I think you guys can vouch for me. I get where you're coming from. Make have played one of the PlayStation ones. You most likely play Tekken 3. Yeah, that's the most popular one. <laughs> um, th th that's a PS1 one, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, Pedro, because who's if, your... If you want to know how popular Tekken 3 was, Everyone I knew who had a PlayStation 1 owned that game. And when I went to England and saw family members, they also had the Tekken 3. So I was like, yeah, it's a big game. Yes, Jova? Uh, Pedro, uh, who's your favorite new character introduced in this game? Uh, Character-wise or gameplay-wise? I guess Onaga, since Onaga is a really cool idea for a villain. Uh, Character-wise or gameplay-wise? Both. I mean, he's basically the Shao Kahn of this game. He's like the big boss character. Um, but I also like uh, the idea of a big dragon man, uh, like uh, as the like your big uh, villain. So, mm -hmm. not to mention, I do like the like uh, I do like the his introduction in the opening FMV of this game. Uh, they do a good job in. Uh, in basically punctifying uh, uh, how powerful he is by having n not even those three uh, together are capable of taking down the Dragon King. Um, so yeah, we're also going to get, uh, uh, not to mention Jova, like, uh, don't worry, we'll get more proper characterization for the Dragon King in the in the conquest mode of Mortal Kombat Armageddon, believe it or not, because um, we're literally going to have a scene, I'm not kidding, we're literally going to have a scene of Quan Chi, Shao Kahn, and Onaga bickering uh, <laughs> in that scene, so it's quite That's funny. Like. It is oh. It is fun. It is. Now, the Conquest mode of Armageddon is actually a big improvement over this one, definitely. Uh, isn't that the one that... Again, I'm not going to say exactly what happens in it, but isn't that the one that um, that MKL 2011 carried on from at the beginning? Uh, no. Oh, I thought... Um... I thought something happened at the end of Armageddon that the 2011 game carried on from to an extent to then reset everything. Oh wait, 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 wait you're talking about how the ending of Armageddon? No, 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 I don't think so. No. 
Um, the only thing Armageddon oh, yeah. did was basically set the stage for the reboot of Nine. Yeah, that's what I meant. Oh, that well, then then it is then yes, Nine. Well, you said Eleven though. I mean, I, bet, I said I said Twenty Eleven. Oh, Twenty Eleven. I thought you said MK Eleven. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yes, basically. Uh, basically, at the end of Armageddon, literally everybody dies except for Shao Kahn and um, Raiden. So Raiden, as a last resort, decides to warn his past MK1 version of himself. Mortal Kombat 1 version. It's way possible. Uh, MK1 version of himself that. Uh, he, and, and here's his, the one message he does send to his past self He must win. Okay, first off, Raiden, you could have sent a more clear, more helpful message instead of a vague one. Um, but yeah, now, so basically, starting with that, as we were going to retell the story of the, the original uh, trilogy of Mortal Kombat from, the, from back in the 90s. But this time, we're in a different time, an alternate timeline where we're, we're going to do thing things are going to go differently, basically. It was an incontinuity retcon. It, it's basically the uh, Star Trek, Star, Star Trek 09 style. Star Trek of, 09, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, 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 technically, technically, the original timeline is still there. It's just that they created a new one to go alongside it, Round basically. One. Fight. I definitely am starting to see what you mean about, you know, story-wise, these tutorial sections feeling like a pacing thing. Again! Okay, that's what, the only real like problem of this is, again, these things are useful. These For those who are newcomers, it's, this is a really useful way of you know, getting familiar with the characters. The problem is that they should have been optional and not and not be put here as a pace breaker for the campaign. All right. Now show me the techniques for fighting the demons of this place, Shujinko. May this knowledge serve you well. Thank you, Ashra. I believe I am ready it's to It's good, like I said, it's enemy. good for someone who's an absolute first timer and absolutely wants to learn all the characters. But if somebody just wants to jump in and learn a specific character, yeah, they'd be out of luck. I look forward to this chance. The, yeah, exactly. The dialogue is so close. It's oh God, Ashra. What the fuck? Well, Ashra's fast. Uh, yeah, you can. There this is the, this is exactly why John Vogel with the new timeline stopped being a script writer and just and just became the the story writer and allowed uh, prop actual script writers to write this script because the dialogue in the in this game is so freaking robotic. Like I will do as oh, you ask. You don't like people standing around saying the absolute <laughs> obvious while also giving very little if none banter. Very well, Damashi. I will do as you say. And I now will go to the place so I can do the thing that you just told me. Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, think, okay. From what I've seen of these games so far, storytelling has never been this series' strong suit. And no. Yet, this one, and yet this this is this is a 2004 game, and yet the storytelling is somehow worse. It's one of those yes. things. Where, yes. It's one of those things where where the the classic the, the Mortal Kombat's one through four had the whole text and bio and ending thing yes but they were told they were oh, told four, four didn't well four did actually four did have the bios it's just that we had to go into the options to see it. and yeah the endings were cutscenes yeah to be fair yeah but the point is uh, those games had had very simple basic stories and it was mostly like the character backstories and you uh, that you were well, talking about like for example scorpions of course but the thing but with this game is uh, they're trying to to have a more traditional cinematic campaign the problem is that you can tell that they don't really know how to because their script right the script writing in this game feels like it was written by a machine so it really is one of the but but it, but it does produce a funny uh, effect on it because like, I genuinely do get a lot of laughs out of watching these cutscenes because they're just they're like hey, very well, Damashi. I will now go to the, I will now go here. Mm -hmm. like, like just because just because it, it, it just it just it just it's, it's that it's that smell that good old that good old two thousand four smell. You know, <laughs> from oh, yeah, yeah, from, it's there, all right. from the from developers that don't know what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> but but points for ambition. Uh, uh, um, so um, we shall we shall be honored with the privilege of join of you joining us in the next video of this extravagant playthrough of a game in which you interact with it. Exactly. See you for the next part, everybody. Make sure to click for the next one because that Farewell. is how you enter. Farewell. Farewell. Goodbye.